Well, thank you. So we got a um, kind of a grab bag of stuff starting off with snapping scapula. Uh, and the, uh, Kevin said, it's painful. Why? And what are we going to do about it? Well, the characteristic of snapping scapula is it's painful crepitus with arm motion. It's usually medial superior border. Um, occasionally, you'll see an anatomic reason, mass lesion, something like that. You see chronic bursitis as secondary to friction, friction. And then it's a muscle imbalance. But basically, snapping scapula, I feel in the majority of cases, is a disorder of normal scapular motion. And therefore, it's scapular dyskinesis. And therefore, we're going to need to evaluate the snapping scapula as we would for any other dyskinetic problem. And we're going to treat it based on the principles of dyskinesis. And therefore, rehab is the number one uh, uh, way to start off with the treatment. I do have a disclosure. Um, a lot of the stuff is from the book that's just recently been published called uh, Disorders of the Scapula and the Role in Shoulder Injury. So here's your case. Here's your throwing athlete, overhead worker. He's got a painful shoulder, plus or minus snapping. He's got medial scapular border prominence that increases with arm motion and hurts right at the superior medial angle. And uh, you have to see well, why is this related to the symptoms. Here's your, uh, there's two checklists here. These are the reasons for, uh, non-operative reasons for dyskinesis. Anything from pec minor tightness, altered rotation, arthritis, latissimus dorsi tightness, serratus anterior weakness, core weakness, low trap weakness, upper trap tightness. That's non-operative. Operative, there are some things. Fractured clavicle, AC joint problems, glenohumeral jo joint injury. Sometimes you can't get them better until you fix the interarticular problem. There's snapping scapula, which is a, problem, yes. Scapular muscle detachment, which is a, a avulsion of the muscles, and then, of course, your nerve injuries. So there's your, there's your checklist. You go and rule those out, rule those in. Therefore, considerations for rehabilitation. The low trap is almost always, and serratus are turned off. They're, they're just not working. They're in, inhibited. And therefore, associated with that is increased upper trap activation, latissimus dorsi activation, and tightness of the anterior muscles, pectoralis, and the, and the coracoid base muscle, the, the uh, biceps. That's your problem with the snapping scapula. Therefore, our therapy is involved in turning on the low trap serratus with no increase in upper trap activation, which means you've got to reduce the pec minor tightness. That's one of the main things. Pec minor and latch, you've got to work on that first. You stay below the impingement level so that you don't get into impingement or other reasons for having pain, and therefore you don't create that snapping. And then you activate the, the kinetic chain. The very first muscle to work when you move your arm is the gastroc in, in when you're standing. So you've got to activate the, the kinetic chain and the core as you activate the scapula. Muscle activations, you want to... Uh, Activate the serratus in a retracted position, not in the punch position, because there's your snapping, there's your protraction, which is the bad position. Low trap is a stabilizer in retraction, therefore you put it in retraction, activate the low trap off of that position there. Rhomboids are very important uh, to help retract the scapula. Once again, that takes the pressure off. And then the upper trap, minimal, because you get in that shrug. You do not want to do protraction activities uh, because that increases your pec minor tightness. You want to do your stretches, uh, all your doorway stretches, get rid, rid of your pec minor. There's a series of exercises called the uh, scapular stability series. They have names, low row, um, lawnmower, robbery, fencing, etc. You do this early in the sequence. The idea is to get the scapula back and the, do it in the right way so that you get everything loosened up in the front, strengthened in the back. So these exercises, uh, once again, you see we are putting it into a retracted position. The inferior glide is a push down just straight down, that really activates, and you pull it back and down. Your low row is, once again, below shoulder level, and you activate into retraction, that once again takes the pressure off that superior medial border. Dynamic exercises, there's a lawnmower where you start from some position of protraction to some degree of retraction, uh, and it's based on how they're feeling. If they're fairly loose, you can get going pretty quickly. But the idea is you eventually want them to get into that, what we call the elbow in the back pocket position, where they're pulling all the way back in a retracted position to get rid of that uh, scapular uh, issue. And the robbery is a bilateral exercise, doing the same thing. Activate off the hip, driving the scapula into retraction and depression so that you get the pressure off of the uh, superior medial border. 
There's a very good uh, algorithm that is listed in British Journal of Sports Medicine, Ellen Becker and Kuhl's. They have two parts. One is a lack of tissue flexibility. The other is a lack of muscle performance. And you work on these algorithms very nicely to get rid of the, the problems. You have to work both on the flexibility and on the muscle performance or strength. You got to tell your patient that uh, in this, uh, with this progress, with this program, that sometimes it takes a while. It takes sometimes as long as three months to get everything totally back to normal. They usually get the snapping gone fairly quickly, but it takes a while to get everything back to normal. Pectoralis is key. You've got to get the pec minor loosened up because that's what's pulling the scapula into that protracted position. What happens is that as you move your arm, if the if the uh, range of motion, if the instant center mo motion of the scapula stays on the medial border, you get snapping. If you get the pectoralis loosened up and you get the lat and the low trap strong, then the uh, instant center of rotation moves all the way out to the AC joint, relieving the pressure on the posterior medial corner. So key point in here is pectoralis flexibility. You got a maintenance uh, and, and do a maintenance strength and flexibility program using that protocol at our scapular center, we see an awful lot of scapulas, we do occasionally one isolated bursectomy a year and, a, and we actually do as many pectoralis releases as we do uh, uh, bursectomy. It's just we haven't found the need to do that. A lot of times a bursectomy um, has been done because they've had a scapular muscle detachment that makes the detachment that much harder because there's much scar tissue. So if you have a snapping scapula, you've got to rule out all those other things before you do the bursectomy. Snapping scapula is a one variant of the scapodiskinesis spectrum, and you have to treat the underlying problem, which is the altered motion. And then you have to look for the reasons for the altered motion, the listings that I uh, gave to you there. Using this protocol of addressing the motion, we get very satisfactory results with very little need for surgery and a much better uh, position of the scapula. Snapping scapula is a distinct clinical entity. It does have findings that you can see, but once again, those are almost the, what I call the victims of the culprits of this loss of motion. Uh, therefore, a comprehensive evaluation needs to be performed, but once again, it's a checklist of all those things that I showed. And in the high percentage, you get good results with uh, no need for surgery. There's a lot of references both for the um, uh, scapodiskinesis and in the uh, book, and also specifically for snapping scapula, which is also in the book. Thank you very much.